I am Lamont at Large. Today, once again, I am back at the Palm Cemetery Eastern location in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Leah Marie Hedrick, July 20th, 1981 to May 16, 2013. She filled every second of her life with laughter, love, and happiness. Her works were kindness, her deeds were love. Precious are the memories of Leah. I did not know Leah personally, but I did meet up with her. I met her at a like a bar and grill many, many years ago, and I remember the name. I did not know she had died. I was here about a year and a half ago, and I was walking because I was looking for Red Fox's grave, which is up ahead, and I ran into her. Uh, she was very beautiful, very nice lady. I don't know what happened to her, and I was very saddened to see that she was here. Um, it was very surreal. Um, I want to say we hung out for about three or four hours just kind of talking. I, don't, I remember she didn't drink, so I was drinking, but she wasn't. But um, we just hung out for the night, and it was cool. Um, I had a, I had looked her up online, uh, just wondering whatever happened to her, and I, I believe she was married. So my condolences uh, to the family members. Uh, she was a very sweet girl, very, very nice. Even though I only met her the one time um she was just very sweet I, she had like a really good energy i'm very saddened to hear to see excuse me what happened i i don't know how i didn't know if she had any health problems i didn't she didn't look like she did she looked pretty healthy to me and very very sad rest in peace leah uh thank you for the conversation it was great we talked about our lives and what we wanted to do and why we lived in las vegas yeah. Just saying hello again to Red Fox, uh, comedic legend, and uh, he's buried next to his mother, Mary Carson. Uh, there's a card right there at his grave. It says "Happy Birthday, Red Fox." It was his birthday last month on the 9th of December. So rest in peace, uh, both uh, Red and Mary. This is Mo Dalitz right here, uh, better known as Gangsta Mo. Uh, this guy was a big time uh, mafiosi dude back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Started cleaning his act up in the 60s. Uh, he ran a big time bootlegging operation in the Midwest, uh, one of the bigger ones. Uh, this guy ran with people like Joe Adonis, Lucky Luciano, Mayor Lansky, Al Capone. This guy was in the meat of things if you will uh he wasn't one for the limelight though that's probably why you never heard of him he wasn't the one that liked to be in the newspapers and all this and that uh he is one of las vegas's founding fathers if you will uh he was the one that uh, started uh, construction and was in with the uh, desert inn he built the first golf course at the desert inn in las vegas here uh he helped uh, fund unlv's football field he helped uh, build Sunrise Hospital. This guy later in his life, after he got away from the gangster stuff and he went uh, legit, uh, he was very uh, philanthropic with his money. Uh, he gave to a lot of charities, a lot of organizations. However, he was really never able to shake the gangster uh, image that he basically had from the time he was a teenager uh, in the 19 teens into the 20s and into the 30s and 40s. Um, but uh, he lived a long life. Uh, I believe he was 89 when he passed. And uh, you won't see too much about him, you know, of course, because he wasn't one for the limelight. Uh, but I guess he let his actions do the talking for him. And uh, towards the end of his life, no, he did a lot of good things for Las Vegas. Las Vegas wouldn't be where it's at without men like Mo here uh, just... Uh, coming out here and uh, just making it a fun place, making it a paradise for people to escape their uh, lives and just come here and have fun. So uh, rest in peace to uh, Mo Dalitz right here, uh, one of Las Vegas's um, founding fathers right here. This is Jack and Zena Rabanowicz. I did a previous video about their unsolved murder on my channel. It was back before I didn't have many subscribers and I remember the video not getting too many views. I'm gonna put the link to the video in the description box below. Please watch the video. Uh, 
the video will tell you a, a little bit about their murders and what happened and just coming back again uh, to pay my respects and uh, I'm glad this time to see that there's flowers on Zena's grave. Uh, an unsolved murder that occurred here in Las Vegas and I'll just say this, it's one of those unsolved murders that will never be solved just because there was a lot of weird things about the murder itself. It was a very, very unusual murder. So please, again, the link to that video will be in the description box below. I appreciate it if you would watch it. Thank you. I remember this story very well. It was all over the news here just when I moved to Las Vegas. This was the first major story that was all over the TV. Uh, Rebecca Diane Glicken and five other kids were doing community service, picking up trash off the freeway here when a stripper high on weed and drinking and all other drugs in her system uh, was driving on the freeway and she plowed into a bunch of kids doing community service and killed six of them. Uh, very, very sad story. And the woman that killed them, she ended up getting, I think she got like 20 to 40 some odd years in prison. I believe she might even be up for parole. And, you know, I'm not a judge and I don't know how long do you keep a woman locked up away for a horrible thing that she did. Uh, but she killed six kids. You get behind the wheel, you think you're fine, you think you're straight, you're not. And there was no way she should have just called a taxi. And because of her, half a dozen kids lost their lives and they'll never be able to uh, become adults because of the selfish act of one. This is Daniel Davies Gans, 1956 to 2009, adored, loving, devoted, generous, funny husband and daddy forever ours. So he was a local entertainer, uh, better known as Danny Gans. This guy was very, very popular. If you visited Las Vegas in the 90s and 2000s, you definitely seen his picture plastered all over the Mirage. He headlined with Siegfried and Roy right there. For many years, he worked at the Mirage. Uh, he was a comedian, a, a singer, impressionist. Yeah, it was basically a comedic routine. He was very, very talented. And he died on May 1st, 2009. I believe it was a, some kind of a heart attack. And uh, very, very surprising because he was very, very young when he died. So it was something that you, you didn't know, you wouldn't expect from him. And I believe online that his ashes were removed from here and he was placed at Forest Lawn in Los Angeles. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but that's what it says online. So this could possibly be empty right here. But this is uh, truly right here a Las Vegas legend and uh, he will be uh, forever remembered as just a um, funny guy. I, I, I never got to see his show, uh, but my roommate, a guy I used to rent a room from, he said he's seen Danny Gans many times and he was trying to get tickets to take me to see him. He said he was really funny and he enjoyed himself. So wherever you are, uh, Mr. Gans, rest in peace. And of course, I have to say hello to Alice Jeanette Herget. Uh, she's interred along with her husband, Arthur, and stepson, Mark, right there. Uh, her and her stepson died the same day. If you don't know who she is, uh, this was a very famous uh, adult film star back in the 80s, 90s. Uh, her stage name was Kitty Fox. I did a video about her on my channel. And uh, she was a uh, showgirl in Las Vegas in the early 80s. And I guess her and her husband decided it'd be pretty interesting for them to do adult movies. And then 
all this history, she was actually the first, like, MILF, I guess, if I can say that word. Uh, she kind of made that popular in, in the adult entertainment business. I don't know how her stepson died, um, but she died in a, uh, a, a care-assisted facility. She had a stroke. So, you know, hey, listen, if you're if you're a guy and... You know, you were watching, you know, as a kid, you were watching dirty movies. You probably watched one of hers. So rest in peace to uh, uh, Kitty Fox right here. This year's Rayburn Wear, April 26, 1979 to December 25th, 1997. Uh, he's buried alongside of his older sister, Pamela Ware. Above him is his mother, their mother, uh, Bonnie Matazinski. The story behind how he died is very confusing. Uh, I will try to best tell it from what I've read. Apparently, Rayburn was dating a girl named Tammy Getz, G-E-T-Z. And when you look up these stories and you try to tell them, there will be a lot of inconsistencies in the story that you don't know if it's true, if it's false. But I'll try to break it down as quick as I can. Uh, the girlfriend, Tammy, ended up getting pregnant with Rayburn's baby. And the father found out. Now, there's a part of the story where Tammy claims that she was date raped by Rayburn. And Rayburn's family, they said, no, that didn't happen. They were a couple and she's crazy. So the father of Tammy, Jack Getz, approaches Rayburn at a parking lot somewhere. And they're the only two there. And Jack pulls out a gun and shoots Rayburn twice in the face and then two more times when he hits the ground. Later on, as he's pulled over and he tells the cops what he did, he claims self-defense. However, if you ask Rayburn's family and friends, they would say that he was afraid of guns and he never was seen with a gun. He's never owned a gun. Uh, nothing of that kind. Uh, the murder went to trial and he was found guilty of first degree murder and he was sentenced to two consecutive life terms and the Nevada Department of Corrections. Most loving mother, daughter, sister, niece and friend, anytime, any place, anywhere. It says at the bottom, it says, you are the best, and can you please write back? Aaron Robin Ernst, February 11, 1965 to July 9, 1982. Aaron was one of 145 people aboard Pan Am Flight 759. It was flying from Miami, Florida to Las Vegas, Nevada, and it had a couple stops. One of the stops was in New Orleans, Louisiana. And on that date, uh, the plane crashed into a ground right outside of New Orleans in a suburb called Kenner. Uh, all 145 people on board were killed instantly, including Aaron and also eight individuals that were on the ground. 
The plane was brought down by a weird wind phenomenon called a microburst. Uh, imagine a tornado, but instead of it circling and spinning around uh, violently, it's it's a wind system that basically it blows air from the atmosphere down into the ground. So just imagine a tornado, instead of it spinning around, it's shooting down to the ground and then spreads out. Uh, it's a very weird uh, wind system. And uh, that is the uh, cause of the that horrible plane crash. Uh, Aaron at the time was a student here in Las Vegas at Bishop Gorman High. Recipes to Aaron and all of those that lost their lives on that uh, tragic day in Louisiana. Melissa Ann Lyles, June 18, 1977 to December 20th, 1995. Melissa was killed in an accident uh, by a suspected DUI driver. Now, I say suspected because in the story, it says that even though the guy that ran into the Jeep that was carrying six teenagers, including Melissa, had passed a field sobriety test. Uh, he blew a 0.5 back in those days. It was, a, I believe, a 1.0 before they lowered it to a 0.8. And um, very difficult to find information about cases. Certain cities, it's a lot easier to find information versus others. And Las Vegas has always been a city that there's just not a lot of information available readily for me to look up. Uh, I don't know how long he ended up getting. He was facing 40 years and uh, the prosecutors uh, were talking about uh, slapping on even more uh, time than that, but there's, there's a good chance that uh, he is no longer in prison. Monique Nicole Prado, September 5th, 1987 to November 28th, 2019. My daughter, my sister and loving mother. Monique was driving on Thanksgiving Day, a day where families are brought together to give thanks for one another. And on that day, instead of Monique's family giving thanks, their worlds were ripped apart and torn asunder by the selfish acts of a man who decided to, instead of calling a taxi or calling an Uber or a Lyft because he drank too much, he decided to drive home and he blew through a red light and crashed into Monique, killing her. And the witnesses at the scene reported him saying, and I quote, I only had one more light to go before I got home, crying like a drunken fool that he is, being placed in handcuffs. Because of his selfish acts, this woman lost her life and her kids lost their mother forever. The rest in peace to this young woman. And my condolences to her kids. On Thanksgiving, this should not happen, nor any other day, especially that day. Live, but not live, but still alive by the grace of God. I am Lamont at Large, once again at the Palm Cemetery Mortuary on Eastern Avenue in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.